All right, I think it's safe to say that we're live. I think we are live to the people of LinkedIn and to the people in Virginia. Uh, welcome, everybody. I think we're going to give a, a few, just a few seconds, a few moments here to let everybody funnel in before we start our roundtable discussion today. Um, today, we've gathered two special guests, uh, John Worthington and Stephanie Aggie, today to talk about the online world, international um, business development tools to help Virginia companies. Um, and, and really uh, all, all uh, U.S. companies and exporters to continue to grow their exports, their sales, their brand and their business. Um, so in today's discussion, we're going to be talking about a few best practices that are going to be relevant to exporters uh, now and for the upcoming years um, and trends that we're going to be seeing um, for, for the time being. So without, um, you know, before we start the discussion, I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie to introduce herself and likewise to John. Uh, we'll set the table and then we'll dive right into the discussion afterwards. So Stephanie, please. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Andrew. And good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be joining this conversation today with my good friend, John. My name is Stephanie Agee, and I'm the Vice President of International Trade at the Virginia Economic Development Partnership. VEDP is Virginia's Economic Development Authority, and my team focuses specifically on helping Virginia exporters grow their international sales faster, more efficiently, and at a lower cost than they can do on their own. We have a range of programs and resources that are designed to do that, some of which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about in our conversation here. Um, one of which is a great program, the Virginia Online Global Program, where we partner with IBT Online to, to deliver that, uh, that service to Virginia companies. Uh, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to John to introduce himself, and then I'm excited to get our discussion going. Stephanie, thank you so much. Andrew, thank you for the introduction. Stephanie, um, what a pleasure today to be talking about um, the VDP and all of the great programs that you have. My name is John Worthington. I'm CEO at IBT Online. And really, it is a huge pleasure to be talking about the state of Virginia, the programs that Virginia has to help Virginia companies grow their export sales brands and business. And, and indeed, one of them is online. It's the Virginia Online Global Programs. And um, thanks to Stephanie and the team of international trade managers who we absolutely love working with, phenomenal team out there to help companies succeed. Um, and we've got some great information to share later in this uh, program. We've got some success stories to share and hopefully some takeaways that will be useful to companies to say, hey, uh, do think about what the VEDP offers. Um, a phenomenal range of programs, some very, very meaningful grants and all of that with the express objective to help you succeed internationally. So. Um, Thank you. That's the end of my little intro. So, Andrew, back to you, sir. John, thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you for the introductions uh, of you both. Um, today's discussion, you know, ultimately, I am the moderator for today's uh, roundtable. Uh, and I know that we're going live here on, on, on LinkedIn and a few different other social media platforms. So please feel free to uh, drop your questions in. We want to make this a collaborative conversation. We have a few questions, that I guess, get the conversation started. But um, you know, if you have any any um, engagement, please please do let us know, and we can uh, include this into our conversation. Um, and then, just uh, last thing to point out here, we're going to keep this. We're going to keep you guys here for about fifteen to thirty minutes. So uh, plan on that, and and uh, we'll be uh, building our conversation around that. So um, just a word on myself uh, as a moderator. Uh, my name is Andrew, and and part of the business development team with IBT Online, and, and happy to be uh, hosting here, Stephanie and John. Um, and without further ado, Stephanie, I think we, the first question we have here is for yourself. Um, and it is ultimately in today's environment is exporting as important as it was before the pandemic. And if it is, how are companies pursuing international business in this challenging environment? Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for asking that question, Andrew, because I think it's really worthwhile to consider. We are in a you know, in a new phase of, of business, a new phase of the international economy. And so I think it's it's really important to ask that question. Is it as important right now? And the short answer is yes, um, absolutely yes. And I, I can say that from, from a few different perspectives. First, what we're seeing from the mostly small and medium-sized Virginia companies that we work with is that they absolutely rely on international sales to meet their revenue goals. 
these companies aren't just doing this because it's fun. You know, there is a fun aspect to it, but it's really tough work. And they're doing it though, because they need them. They need those sales. Um, and that change, that, that, that necessity has not changed uh, in the last two years, despite what we've seen with the pandemic. I think, you know, we could say that the concept of globalization may have taken a hit by some anyway, in the last few years, just due in part to the massive supply chain struggles that we've all experienced. But I don't see that impacting companies' desire to go after international business or the necessity of that business to their bottom lines. And then I'd also argue that the last two years have proven that having a diverse set of markets to sell into, and not just relying on sales to your home market or maybe one export market, is extremely important. We watched, we all watched the pandemic hit countries at different times and impact their purchasing and production cycles in waves. So having other markets to pivot to, to sell into while others were being hit the hardest has proven to be super important for companies just to maintain steady sales volumes. Um, and then in answer to the question of, well, how, you know, if, 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 it, if how are companies pursuing international business in this time, given the, the challenges we've seen, um, you know, they, it, it's always been difficult for small and medium sized companies to do international business. But I think it's, it's only become become more difficult. And so they've been asking for more help. How to figuring out how to adapt to the current environment, the new challenges, and most importantly, how do they meet and maintain relationships with customers and multipliers around the world? Um, so during the first year to maybe 18 months or so of the pandemic, we did a ton of market research for companies, making sure that our clients had really all their ducks in a row, so to speak, so that when the world opened up, and when travel was possible again, they would be ready to go, ready to get to their target markets, meet the demands that we identified via that market research. Um, but that hasn't that still as we move into this next phase, that's not changed either. Doing your homework, getting market intelligence, competitive analysis, understanding regulatory hurdles, getting your marketing uh, ship shape um, is still just as important, even as travel opens back up. And we emphasize that with all of the companies that we work with. Um, so, John, I'd love to get your perspective on all of this. What are you seeing in terms of the importance of exports? You know, Stephanie, and um, I, you know, I, I share absolutely what you've just said. And I would just to sort of um, uh, emphasize the fact that those um, important uh, skill sets, tools, the information, the VDP and your team do that so very well. I mean, that's what you guys do so brilliantly for Virginia companies. And so, um, you know, what a helping hand, you know, um, it's true, you know, I mean, I've we've worked long enough together and IBT Online is so proud to be a part of your Valley program over the past years. You know, we've seen it in action. And so, um, you know, we're, we're talking about it, but IBT Online, I would say to you also as well, we, you know, we work with the US commercial services. We're very grateful to the US commercial services. Um, we're very proud they offered us and gave us the uh, President's E Award for export services to US companies and as a recognition of the program. So often we go to the US commercial services for, for to answer some of these questions. And if you go to the, the shall we say, the homepage there, you'll find them identifying four reasons. Number one, they state 95% of the world's consumers are outside the US. And that is that number. It just think of the opportunities if you're going to shut the door on that. And don't shut the door on that. Open that door and go through. And as they say, it's never been easier to do so than today. Foreign competition is increasingly domestic. And, and this is true. Um, look around you and see that. And again, this internationalization that the VDP can bring to you will help you win that competitive world. And exporting, as Stephanie said, is profitable. That revenue that can come in with the cost centers remaining the same can sometimes go straight to the bottom line. And we've seen that for companies. They can take that international revenue while keeping their costs managed. And number four, exporting helps companies learn to compete. And um, if we can help you to do that, if the VDP can help you to do that, we're really going to begin to win the game and help companies be successful, which is, you know, our common aligned uh, objective. So, um, Stephanie, thank you for that. And Andrew, back to you, sir. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for the back and forth. Some really uh, interesting comments there. And um, that really fa that really falls into my next question. And, and it's for you, John. Um, and I know that you were kind of touching on it just briefly, but you know, why do you think that companies now need to focus on digital solutions to really capture this this wave of exporting the the, the their new sales um, and ultimately getting new customers? 
So um, please, you know, I would say essentially there are four four pieces of of that. Um, you know, we see four four essential elements. Number one, just look at the world of new technologies. Um, just cast your mind back five years, ten years, uh, you know, twenty years. Um, there are toolkits out there that are enabling you to do things that you just couldn't do before. Think of the 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 web, what the web has brought, the different platforms, the software, the service provider, the mobile devices. So technology use it you know number one technology please use it be aware of what is out there number two we've all had a miserable experience i don't know what your personal experience has been over the past two years with covid but it's it's you know clearly not been fun for anybody it's not been fun for societies it's not been fun for individuals and corporations alike it's been it's been a very miserable time and amongst the other things that we've learned is how everybody has pivoted to online. People talk about the pivot to online, driven by COVID. McKinsey's called it the great accelerator. They claim that in the two years that we've all been hunkering down, we've sort of done 10 years in terms of taking up online. And that's, you know, there's some real evidence around that. Look at what's happened to Amazon and look how we've all onboarded into e-commerce. At every generation, older generations, lockdown, learning to use e-commerce and, and ordering. Look at Zoom. I mean, before then, I'd never done a Zoom meeting. Now I wind up in Zoom meetings all the time. We're all Zoomers. How did that happen? And so it's been, it's a changing COVID-driven world. And that has taught people new lessons that they're not about to forget. Number three, going to Stephanie's point about business travel, business travel. Um, Amex Business Travel says in 2020, business travel was down 71%. They tell us they're not expecting business travel to come back to pre-COVID levels till 2025. Multiple reasons behind that, but I mean, um, you know, I, I don't know about anybody who's traveling at the moment, but I have to say getting on an aircraft is a permanent experience of delays and things going wrong and bags, I was stuck waiting for bags to be unloaded because COVID-related problems, travel-related problems. Unfortunately, they're still with us. So again, another imperative, please look at digital. And finally, and perhaps most interesting is the new generations that are coming forward. Um, we're now into the generations of the millennials born 81 to 96. They're more digital than ever. They're decision makers. They're now between 26 and 41 years old. And these people are driving it all, let alone Gen Z. And they're all coming through. So the generations coming in now, they're younger, they're more technology aware, and they're using technology. So again, please, four sort of reasons that, that we give that we think underpin this pivot to digital. Stephanie, your view, please. John, I just, you know, I couldn't, I, can't, I have nothing to add. I mean, that's perfect. Those are all extremely salient examples and reasons why, why digital is so important. I would just say the only other thing really to add there is just, you know, when when we do put people on planes, when when our clients and, and others do get on planes to go visit new customers, you can be sure that those people you're meeting have looked you up. They've looked up your company. They are finding your website. They're trying to find their website. They're hoping they can find it in their country. But if they have trouble accessing it, you know, that's going to be a problem. I mean, they're the the, the pre-work done before I think in-person meetings is just gotten even more. Um, and there's a higher expectation that a company understand before you even walk in the door really who you are and what you're representing. Um, and that's and digital is really the only way to give them that information prior to that sales call. So I think that's another really just reason why it's just it, it, it's just gotten more and more important. And yeah, John. Stephanie, if I may jump in, I do think it's exciting. It's that sort of combo piece, because as you say, and I know, Stephanie, you're taking 10 Virginia companies to London in the first week of May. And that's just a great opportunity. It's to do both together. It's to absolutely do that. I know that you'll be welcomed, lots of excellent meetings and those face to face meetings. Um, but when you can do the two, it's the ideal combo. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you in London in the first week of May. Andrew. Same here. Whew. Wonderful. Yeah, great back and forth tonight. And, and, you know, John, I think I was going to say the same thing as far as the combination between, you know, digital and, and travel. And when things come together, I think it's going to be a great synergy. Um, you know, all of what uh, the pandemic has really taught us um, as far as the importance of digital solutions. Um, so, uh, you know, the next question that we have here is, is for you, Stephanie, um, and it's, uh, you know, how would you recommend companies shape their strategy to continue to meet 
new customers and continue to stay top of mind for the prospects? Yeah, good question. I think it's really going to build on what John and I were just saying, and I'll, and I'll do that here. You know, this is something we deal with every single day, and this is something we help our clients with every single day before the pandemic, during, and now as we go into this next phase. It is just such a challenge for so many small and medium-sized companies who often, usually, don't have large marketing budgets to figure out how do I both meet new contacts internationally, connect with them, um, but then also stay in touch with and top of mind for the contacts that I already have. So again, as we as we move forward into this next phase, this is it's going to take a multi pronged approach, which we've just discussed. Um, our clients, we're seeing them eager to get back on planes, back out to their target markets to meet new and prospective customers in person. And they, I, I, I've seen what John is talking about with the, the reporting on business travel, and I think that's absolutely true. Business travel is going to take a really long time to get back. But I think mostly small and medium sized companies whose travel is really more about meeting new customers and maybe engaging with customers they already have. That's different than, say, if you're a multinational and you're going to, you know, your UK office and thinking, well, am I going to take a take, take, you know, am I going to take a plane and go to my go to my New York office and, and meet with my folks there? Or are we going to get on Zoom? But when you're talking about making new connections, yeah, um, you know, I think that's where we will continue to see to see people traveling. And we're certainly seeing that with our client base. But so that's great. You know, we're happy to facilitate in-person meetings for our clients, but we're also finding that the companies that we're aiming for them to meet with in their various target markets are really being very discerning about what meetings they take. Who is it worth their time to meet with? Now that they've gone through this whole period of realizing I can do a lot in this in this kind of video environment, um, I don't have to take every meeting that's that's proposed. So they're really being being very critical of that. Um, and and so how do you convince your target customer that it's worth their time to meet with you? And that's where the second prong comes into play. You better have a well-defined, solid value proposition, being able to explain exactly what problems your product or service offers a solution for. And you absolutely have to have professional targeted marketing materials that explain that value proposition clearly to your prospects. And because again, they're going to be going online. They're gonna be looking for information on you before you even walk in the door, before they've even said it's okay for you to walk in the door. So it's really important that your, that your website, that your social media presence, that it, that it represents you well, that you can be found in that target market, that they that it's not simply a U.S. presence that you have online, that it is a very well-rounded presence that that speaks to an international audience and hopefully to the audience of the country that, that you're trying to, um, you know, that you're trying to, to target. Um, so because, again, they're going to be looking for you, looking on LinkedIn, looking on Twitter, Instagram, if it's applicable to your line of business, and it won't be for everyone, but you've got to know which social media channels are important in your industry, in your line of business, and make sure that you're there and that you're well represented there. Um, so again, visiting market and seeing your customers face to face, I think that's still a super important part of your international strategy. But this digital aspect is, really just can't be ignored. And John, I'm sure you have much more to say on this topic. So I want to turn it over to you. No, I mean, it's definitely, absolutely. Um, um, really, I'm just going to sort of continuum onto that. Um, and again, as IBT Online, we look around and we look for thought leaders. We look for um, um, organizations that can give some real pointers to help companies going forward. One of the companies that we love is a company called HubSpot. And so we attend a lot of the HubSpot learning sessions and they come across with a, a couple of points, two particular points I'd like to share um, now. Number one, their view, and I, I guess it's sort of just, it kind of makes absolute sense. Their statement is, be where your prospects and customers are or where they're going to be on, in an online sense. So if you've done that study and you know where your customers and prospects are, which online groups they're attending, which uh, Stephanie mentioned, LinkedIn and, and other social media channels, HubSpot says, just be thoughtful about that and get where they are, where they're looking, how they're searching and Google search what they're searching for. Make sure that they can find you in the search terms. Make sure that you are where they want to come and find you. It makes for a great experience. You will actually encounter them at the time that they want to encounter you because they're looking for you and there you are. And you can say, hey, I'm here, guys. What's your problem? How can I resolve it? So HubSpot's second point is bring value. So be where they're coming to you. So today be found, be understood and bring them value, bring them something, bring them an asset, bring them a resource, bring them a solution to their problem because their problems are pretty announced when they're looking. 
you can understand what their problems are, what are they looking for, and therefore you come with some value. And I suppose the case study that I really found fun, um, you know, casting your mind back, do you remember the days, you know, sort of pre-web when you had to go and buy a car? And you had to go to a car, a garage, and you had to look at a car. You had to walk around it, and you had to deal with a sales guy. And, a, and then if you didn't like what he's got, you got to get in your car and go to another garage and look at another brand, look at another car and understand it. What colors? And you were told that there are only two colors. Well, today you go online, you've got everything. And all the studies tell us that everybody making these purchase decisions, they've already researched it online. They've already done everything on the internet to find what they need. And when they walk into a garage, even if they do get one, they know exactly what they want, the spec, the scope, the price and everything. So the power today is with us in online and therefore use that power that you have to make yourself very, very visible, findable. So when people are searching, they can find you and engage with you and get down that buyer's journey to do business with you. Andrew. Thank you, John. Waiting for my cue there. And uh, yeah, some really great back and forth and, and appreciate the, kind of the best practices for, for you know, what we're seeing at the, in, in, in uh, the digital world and, and, and kind of the effect for that. Um, I know we're, we're running uh, close on time here, so we have uh, a few moments for just a few more questions. Um, just to say uh, this question is for you, Stephanie. Um, this is, a, you know, from the perspective of a Virginia based exporter. How could they potentially tap into the resources that you provide that the BEDP provides? Yeah, absolutely. So um, really the first step is to start the conversation. And that starts with one of our regionally based international trade managers. So we have folks based throughout Virginia, and they are the key for companies to kind of get, sort of open the door to, to all that we have to offer. Um, when you meet with a, with a trade manager on our team, they really aim to meet you where you are in terms of your experience with exporting and then help you get to that next level, right? So you want you, the reason why you're talking, why you might be interested in this program today is because there's probably a next level you're trying to get to and, and we wanna help you get there. So um, if you're just getting started or if you've been doing, if you've been exporting, but maybe with more of a reactive approach and you're interested in being more proactive and strategic in going after your international sales, that's what will help you do. Um, the trade manager will ask you lots of questions, more importantly, listen to you, and then help you to sort of design and execute a strategy as, as simple or as detailed as you want it to be to get, help you achieve your international goals using our resources, um, including market research that's customized to you. You know, when we say market research, we're not just pulling a, a report off a shelf. We are having in-country partners design a, a market research study that's specific to you and your, your product or service. Um, our trade managers will introduce you to our schedule of trade missions where you can travel to market and meet leads that have been vetted specifically for you. We will connect you to our network of service providers, including IBT online and, and folks like them that are really there to help execute the parts of your international strategy that require specialized expertise. Um, and most importantly, then our trade managers can also determine which of our grant programs you might qualify for, that it'll help you cover the costs that go along with implementing an international strategy. And the Virginia Online Global Program is a great example where we put companies directly in touch with you all at IBT Online. You all go to work to establish and maximize the company's online presence in market. And then our grant funding helps to pay for that work. So that's that's really the best way is to get, get started by, by connecting with us. Uh, John, anything from your perspective to add to that? Uh, I mean, I would just like to say that um, I got to this meeting, a kickoff meeting with a company called Ensco introduced by John. And um, John, if you're listening, I want to say thank you very much. The kickoff meeting went well. Ensco Micro Search Division, thanks to Tom Plutt and Suzanne Nathan. We kicked off today three online global, Virginia online global programs for Latin America, France and the Middle East. And um, we're super excited. Great enterprise, great programs. They've got the phenomenal human presence detection systems. And we're looking forward to working with them, ensuring that in these target markets, we can help them get out there and be found by whole new audiences and then engage with them, make themselves easy to do business with. So we had a great kickoff meeting and it really was that process you described, um, um, Stephanie. Thank you. I mean, John uh, sent over an email. We had a couple of um, almost Zoom calls, Microsoft team calls. And um, 
then guess what? We're, we're moving forward. So it's a seamless process. And um, thank you. And um, is this a Q moment? Andrew, Q. Thanks so much, John. Yeah, and, and that uh, that really dives into one of our last one of our final questions here. And um, you know, I, I think I'll pass it over to John first, and maybe Stephanie can add on to it. Um, just in regards to um, you know Virginia exporting success stories, are there any that I guess you've seen in the past that might be relevant to you know the challenges that Virginia exporters are currently facing and, and how they've been able to overcome that with you know say digital uh, digital solutions. John, please. Andrew, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Fav favorite subject. You know, we we love. We're very proud to work with Virginia companies. We um, love working for companies in that long-term uh, business development relationship. I, I would like to flag up two case studies. Hartrue, based in Troy, Virginia, um, premium tennis court surfaces, consultation equipment, and accessories. So, I mean, these guys are great. I'd like to be a big shout out to Pat Hansen, president, and Brandy Gentry, marketing manager. We've worked with them to build the Shopify e-commerce websites for Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. I mean, it's been a great project. We're running the search engine marketing. We're running the social media marketing. I'm very proud to say that the programs have been very successful, really, thanks to the Hartru team. Year-on-year -year sales are up 240%, and Wimbledon is taking some of Hartru's courts Grass courts in Wimbledon are a tradition. And guess what? It's hard to there as well. And we're all very proud of that, very pleased with that. And I hope that Pat will be over in London in July so that we can go to Wimbledon together. So Pat, please book your ticket now. Second one. All right, I do have a second one. Maruka, Maruka, America. Maruka, America is based in Glen Alley, Virginia. We built four websites for them. Um, North America, the United Kingdom, Belgium, and Japan. Um, and a, a great team, a shout out to Tech, Rika, and Shintaro. Thank you very much indeed for this opportunity to work with you. You know, our, our objective, um, and they make these big machines. I mean, go and have a look at the Maruka America website. These are big machines. These are big, high value machines. And the objective was to make uh, 10 machine sales in 12 months. Um, 10 months in, we're at nine machines. And you can imagine and do the maths in your head, um, the programs that we propose and the, and the, shall we say, the cost of those programs compared to the value of each one of these, these big machines that they're getting out. So bravo to Team Maruka America. And it is a pleasure to work with you long term driving the, that business and those exports for Virginia, the creation of jobs in Virginia. Um, cue to Stephanie. Yeah, no, John, thanks for that. I'm so glad you guys have worked with uh, with, with, with so many of our great clients. So glad to hear all uh, those the specific stories you mentioned. You know, in, in our we we see lots of success stories utilizing various parts of our of our programs and, and resources. And you know, I won't go into detail on those because I know we're short on time, but just the point is is that companies come back to us year after year. And that's our goal. Our goal is to work with companies over a long-term period. We love, we don't want to be transactional to the extent that our clients will allow us to help them long term, that's what we want to do. And we want our services to evolve with each company as they grow and as they uh, move through their export cycle. Um, I will say we do a survey of all companies who use our services every single year. Um, and we get great feedback on those and on those surveys. Almost 100% of the companies we work with say that they would use our services again, and they would recommend them to others. And that's incredible and super humbling, but it's something we're really proud of because serving our clients, bringing value to them is always our number one priority. Andrew? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And uh, we've got one last question here to wrap everything up. And, um, you know, of course, if there's any last minute questions, please feel free to drop it in before we wrap up this session today. But um, to you, Stephanie, I'm going to ask the question, if there's any listeners out there that are looking to learn more about the VEDP and the programs that we have discussed today, you know, what are some of the next steps for them? And then I can pass it over to John. Yeah. Yeah, so, sounds good. Well, great. Well, yes, please, if, if you're listening today, if you like what you've heard, if you would like to engage with us at VEDP, or if you know someone else who may or who should engage with us, please reach out. Um, easiest thing to do right now is just connect with me here on LinkedIn. Um, I, I am here. You can message me. You can connect with me. Happy to happy to, to, to start the engagement that way. I'll get you to the right person on my team. You can also send me an email. 
at SAG, my last name, SAG at VEDP.org. Check out our website, exportvirginia.org. Uh, there are ways to connect with us via the website as well. We want to talk to you. We want to answer your questions, but most importantly, get you access to our services so that you can meet your international goals. John, any other last thoughts? I would just be supportive of that message. I mean, please, folks, I mean, don't waste the opportunity. The VEDP and the team, the international trade managers, they have so much knowledge, so much experience. They've walked this walk so many times before. They've got great programs, the Valley programs and others. Please do take advantage of it. And, and guess what? Um, social media gives you that opportunity to engage. Go to LinkedIn, just um, search. You can search. You can search VEDP, search for Stephanie, search for the team. You'll find them, connect with them. And please do take advantage of the programs. Today, there are so many resources here to help you be successful internationally. And um, Stephanie and the VDP team, you know, um, are leading the charge. So, um, you know, thank you so much, Stephanie. And, um, you know, I look forward to all of the, the great things that are coming down the pipe together. Thank you, John. Wonderful, Same here. Wonderful. Same here. And thanks so much, Andrew. Of course. Of course. Wonderful last thoughts there. Thank you both, John, Stephanie. Thank you for the audience. We promise we'd get you out of here in 30 minutes. We're at the 30 minute mark here. So thank you again for attending our live stream. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact any of us through LinkedIn or through our emails. We're happy to answer any questions, be a helping hand uh, and continue to leverage the online world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, you too.